I have a feeling that tea theme has become very trendy in fragrances and many creators have created something around the tea of matcha or mate. Today I will not only speak about these two kinds but I will also speak about some nuances of black tea, green tea and maybe some teas you have not even heard about. I'm very picky about tea as a note in fragrances and mostly because a lot of perfumers they claim to have this note but they actually don't because tea is a difficult note to create and it's even more difficult to keep it in fragrance throughout several hours. While most people start their morning with a cup of coffee, I always start my morning with a cup of black tea and usually I prefer a some tea. And now I would like to share with you my recent purchase that comes from Bulgari Le Gem collection and this fragrance is called Orom. In terms of composition, this perfume is very simple. It is oud, vanilla and Assam essence. From the moment I tried this fragrance, I just became obsessed with it. And it's very rare that I buy 100 ml bottles, but here I just could not resist. This fragrance is actually designed for men but I think it's truly unisex and I really advise ladies to try it. It's not only the packaging that is so beautiful that justifies the price, it's the quality of oud. You know there are different kinds of oud. Some ouds, they are like uh, itchy wool blankets, but others, they are more velvety. This oud feels like silk to my nose. And the same thing with vanilla. There are different kinds of vanilla. Some of vanillas are very synthetic, some are cloying, some are too sweet. This vanilla is just a paradise for my senses. It's just so sweet and so natural and it just blends with oud in such a wonderful, delicate manner. And the note of Assam essence makes it really unique. It does smell like Assam tea. And I know some people say like, mm, I don't want to smell like tea. But in combination with oud and vanilla, it just makes such a perfect fragrance. I don't even know how else to describe it. I'm just obsessed. The next fragrance that smells like a very realistic tea is called Wulang Cha from a Turkish brand called Nishain. This fragrance is supposed to have a prominent oolong note. Oolong is a kind of green tea that I really recognize among other green tea notes. And it's a kind of tea that I really like myself. But I cannot say that this one smells like oolong. To me, this fragrance smells like English tea time. This is a typical Earl Grey with lemon. I personally had high expectations for the note of fig in here, but I never found it. The fragrance where the relationship of fig and tea comes out in a strange way is Fig Tea by Nikolai. Normally, we imagine the fig note to be associated with a fresh fruit. And we kind of know the way it smells in fragrances. Here, it's totally different. I have dried fig and I have a cup of tea. I put this dried fig in my tea and I let it soak for 15 minutes. Hot tea. 15 minutes later, I take it out and that's the smell you get in this fragrance. The tea fragrance that has got a lot of exposure is Matcha Meditation by Replica of Maison Margiela. I don't even have a sample of it, but I've tried it several times in a department store. I can tell you that I really like the opening. It really opens up like very realistic matcha cappuccino slightly sweetened, despite that I usually take mine without any sugar. Replica did not decide to focus on one kind of tea. They put everything into their pyramid. They put green tea, matcha and mate. So pick one. In any case, the beginning is really nice and I do feel white chocolate in here. The only thing that I'm struggling with is the longevity of this fragrance. 15 minutes later, it's very weak. Half an hour later, it's gone. So if you're just searching for a fragrance to meditate for 30 minutes, I think matcha meditation would be perfect for you. But if you're searching for something to wear longer than that, then maybe you should search somewhere else. A fragrance where the green tea note sounds very similar to this one is done by the house Teo Cabanel. And in here, they focus on the note of green gemancha tea. Je ne sais quoi. Kind of charming French name for a fragrance, isn't it? And it's translated as I don't know what. But I actually know what it smells like to me. 
I just buy a croissant in a bakery, I cut it in two and I put it into my oven. When I take it out, I just put this pistachio paste on top of my croissant and I would just be in love with this perfume if it smelled like pistachios on top of my croissants. But unfortunately, in 15 minutes or so, the scent changes. It loses its sweetness and it really becomes like green tea with crispy rice. And here I have green tea called Gimancha Yama with the real grilled rice in here. Compared with the croissant with pistachio paste, <clears throat> it's not as yummy. So here we have no sweetness anymore, but the bitterness and the richness of green tea really comes out. As for the base, there are some woody notes in here, but in the mix of wood, I can only catch vetiver because it's nice, soft, and it complements green tea. Another perfume that has green tea and rice in the description is called One Umbrella for Two. It is done by a Parisian perfume house called Flaraiku, and they create their fragrances around the theme of Japanese poetry. And surely, green tea belongs in here. But I would not say that this one has tea that is like really coming out, and is easy to guess from the beginning. This fragrance is truly gourmand and is one of the best sellers of the brand. The official pyramid does not even tell you from where this sweetness is coming, so you might fantasize something of your own. In my fantasy world, this is black tea with concentrated sweetened milk, in Russian we call it zgushonka, and sweet dried biscuits that I soak in my tea. And the smell of a black currant leaves that you smash in your hands. This smell is very different from black currant berries that are claimed to be in the description. And then there is this base that is also kind of interesting. To me, this base is a continuation of this black currant leaves that are also mixed with the soft woods and maybe that rice powder. That's where it comes in, in the base. In any case, this is probably the most gourmand tea that I have in this presentation. If you ask me about my favorite tea fragrance, I will confidently tell you that this one is Chi by Ormond Jane. This is a British brand and the creator describes this fragrance as calming and spiritual. I totally agree with her. And I think this perfume is really made for meditation. And unlike Replica, it lasts really long. I wore it in the middle of London outside and it lasted about four or five hours on me. The thing is that this fragrance did not impress me from the beginning. The opening is very quiet and I did not think I would like it. But an hour later, this combination of tea and asmanthus has really charmed me. And on top of it, it gave me a kind of feeling um, as if I'm in touch with my own self. And the dry down is also so beautiful. It's like soft woods with a kind of powdery touch that I was thinking is coming from rice, but in fact, I think it's coming from violet. Otherwise, there is such a beautiful and thin balance between sweetness and bitterness and green notes and dryness and florals all together, but such a harmony. Another perfume where I was hoping to find the mix of tea and asmanthus is by a French brand called Goutal, and it's called Lille Ute, Tea Island. Unfortunately, this fragrance has a totally different nature. I would say that this one is made to freshen yourself in the summer. It's very light, citrusy. It feels like a mix of white tea with lemon. And unfortunately, I do not get so much of asmanthus in here. On the other hand, I think the green element, like freshly cut grass and herbs, is pretty strong in here. It's like you're sitting on a freshly cut loam, drinking your white tea with lemon. There are so many tea fragrances around, and I have not even mentioned Elizabeth Arden with their green tea and white tea. There's also a Bulgari collection that I would like to get my hands on, and they have blue tea and red tea and white tea as well. And there is an entire brand that is evolving around the tea theme that is called State of Mind, and they deserve a totally separate review, hopefully one day.